funcionando? Já tá funcionando. Não, ok, eu prefiro chegar aqui. Ok, so good morning to all. Uh, all our first speaker today is Bismarck Costa from UFMG. His talk is a new and robust way to study phase transitions, the zeros of the energy probability distribution. Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to be in this meeting again since the first 1997 uh, when we started at this, uh, I don't know when, but today in the morning still, we'll have a short history about about this meeting, how it started, how it was the first one till today, the troubles and some things we had. Okay, but now I am going to tell you about something very new we developed in our group uh, to stood phase transition, old thing, but with a new way to, to understand phase transition. And this is me, Mo is there, and Julio Rocha could not come, but he was a great collaborator, he's our collaborator. And this is a 2K version of the Davis Triangle. This is a new, new way to, to see this, this triangle, Davis Triangle. So first, Quick overview. I will review uh, some aspects of phase transition, important aspects of phase transi transitions to understand our algorithm, how to calculate averages uh, very, very quickly, finite size scaling, and something about the Fisher zeros, which uh, will base our, our algorithm some ideas about histograms and we will define a new set of zeros and then finally we'll present our our algorithm some examples and some troubles we had and also the solution to the troubles and some final remarks all right so here we go how to define a phase unfortunately Nobody knows how to define a phase. We can define a transition between phase, but not a phase. What is a phase? There, are, there were some, some, some attempts to, to do this. I know some from Fisher, some from Kadanov, some very important people, but at the end they just gave up and there is no way to really define a phase. But anyway, uh, what is important for me at this moment is a phase transition. And a phase transition occurs when we cross a phase boundary. It's kind of, you know. And this is very important, a, f a free energy phase to be analytic at the, the, the transition. This is a very important for, for our, our development. Okay. Then, uh, following uh, any attempt to define a phase needs to introduce the idea of an order parameter, which has different values in one phase and another phase. Again, there is something uh, self-feeding. Uh, okay, then I the problem of the final phase is that we can say that this is a vapor phase and we cross this line, we go to the liquid phase. But what about going this way or in this way? So what, what is the phase? How can we define a phase here very rigorously? I, I don't know and probably nobody knows how to define in general a phase. And this is just to give an idea uh, of the phase transition. This is for water. Uh, you know, this water in a, in a liquid phase. This is a solid phase. We know very well this. And here is a very nice 
idea about the order of the phase, the old idea about the phase, first, second, third, fourth order phase transition. And uh, the idea was basically when you have uh, a, a, a discontinuity or, or, or a non aliticity in, a, in, a, in the derivative of the, 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 the free energy, you say that if the, cons the, the, the discontinuity comes in the first, second, and so on derivative, we say that this will be the, 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 the order of the phase. But this is an old idea, and Fisher in the 70s, uh, he just uh, reclassified this in a continuous and non continuous phase, the f old first order. Well, when, when we have uh, latent uh, heat, uh, he said, well, this is a discontinuous phase transition, the other are continuous phase transition. That is basically the idea. It's just to accommodate some, some other uh, uh, ideas of phase transition. All right. So there is also a very special uh, transition named uh, Costa-Litaulis or Brzezinski, Brzezinski Costa Litaulis transition, which is a bit different from those ideas of old ideas of first and second order phase transition. Uh, well, second order phase transition, for example, you have uh, an order parameter like the magnetization, for example, which is zero in one, one uh, phase and is different from zero in another phase. But this transition, this kind of, of transition, uh, there is no order parameter at all. But what characterizes the, the, the transition? Well, in this case, it's the correlation then, how it behaves, how the correlation function behaves. This will characterize this kind of transition, Brzezinski Kostelitola transition. Uh, and the main reason is here. This is a theorem, of, uh, I believe, it was stated in the 60s, uh, 1960s. Continuous symmetry cannot be spontaneously broken at finite temperature in system with sufficiently short range of interaction. Well, sufficient short range of interaction uh, this is quite difficult to, to define, but uh, in one way, if the interaction is uh, second or third neighbor, for example, this is short enough, and then the theorem holds. Uh, but in dimension smaller or, or equal to, then this theorem states that it's impossible to have uh, order disorder transition. That's all. That's what all what we need. And so I have so defined the continuous, the second order, the old second order transition is a continuous transition. Uh, first order, it has a, a, a latent heat, and this one, which is a new, this costly talus. So I, define, I have defined the three. What happens in the costal tallest transition is just that when temperature goes down, then the correlation length here, the, the, the correlation function here, uh, behaves like an expon exponential, decays exponentially. And from here to t equals zero, the, 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 uh, the decay is like a power law. Then we have not only one point of transition, but the entire line of transition. This line is a critical line in the sense that uh, 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 this happens here. And there are some important things like uh, what should be another parameter like the magnetization is zero all over this entire region of temperature, the susceptibility, the susceptibility 
goes like this, it's infinite from here down there. And what else is important here? The free energy. Free energy is not analytical in this region, but is C infinite, means that it has all the derivatives, but it's not analytical. This is very important from, from what is uh, it's going in the, the next uh, slides. Oh, specific heat. Specific heat is finite. Specific heat is finite all over here too. It is not critical in the sense that it has some infinite jump or, or, or something like that. What else? Okay. I think this, those are the most important points. Yeah. So, this is a just to resume, the old Ehrenfest uh, cl uh, uh, classification, first order, has a discontinuity in the first derivative of the free energy, second order, a discontinuity in the second derivative, and so on. But for Fisher, the first order is when you have a latent uh, uh, heat and continuous is all the other and the transition. Uh, continues in the sense of the free energy. All right. Uh, just to give some examples, this function, uh, it's better this one. this one. This one, for example, has all derivatives, but it's not analytical, close to zero, because uh, it has, uh, you see, uh, close to zero, it is not analytical. There is no uh, um, a series that you can you can expand close to zero because it has different values from up and down. Uh, the function uh, can fail to be analytical in one point or a set of, of discrete points, or uh, it can be singular in the branch cuts, for example, or or here. This is a tornado, and this point is interesting. This point is really. Not an, the, the, the function that describes the tornado is not analytical at that point. All right. Now I need the idea of uh, universal class. Uh, this definition came from Kadanoff. I do not remember when it was in 2000, a paper of 2000. I do not remember uh, by heart. But. Uh, the idea is quite simple, probably most of you know. Close to their critical point, greatly different physical systems exhibit a strong similarity. Various microscopic properties turn out to be independent of microscopic details, but are solely determined by a small number of global parameters. This is the reason why we study the XY model, for example, uh, not uh, liquid helium directly, because at the transition they are essentially the same. But these uh, ideas of universality are very important because the important things are the critical exponents. The temperature can vary from one model to another, but what is important, uh, uh, the important things are the critical exponents. Those are the important guys. Another idea, finite size scaling. Of course, computers are wonderful, but they are finite. I can simulate, I can get results only uh, in fi for, for finite systems. So what we do is to simulate Small system, this one is uh, probably this an easing or, or something. It looks like easing. But it's just an example. We make a sequence of, of calculations for all of uh, several, several volumes of the system. And then we can extrapolate somehow to the infinite volume. Ah, this is easing. Ah, it's not the now I, I can see that. 
critical temperature. I didn't realize before. Okay. So it's a susceptibility. But here, there is something very, very interesting. The maxima of the susceptibility and on the specific heat in this case, and where the magnetization reached the, the zero, this characterized the gives the, 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 the critical temperature at the end. So from time to time, we find models where this convergence come in from this direction and the, 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 the susceptibility comes from the other direction. This is a very interesting characteristic we will uh, we will use in our in our in our ideas here. Okay, let me see. That's it. One step further. So another problem with uh, finite calculations in general is how to calculate averages. Well, averages in and can the canonical ensemble, we calculate in this way, where this summation is over all the x configuration. And but it can be rewritten in this way, where g is the number of states with energy g, or density of states, depending if you are in a continuous or discrete. Uh, model. This is the way we calculate the average. Okay. Well, so we have these two small problems, which is the thermodynamic limit, and the solution for this is to use what I said: this finite size scaling, and then. Even for moderate system size, we cannot calculate all the states of the system. So what we do is just to average of independent configurations. We generate as much as you can. And at the end, we estimate um, in a reasonable way the, the error bars we are, we are taking. So. Okay, single histogram. This is a very important part of, of this talk. Uh, we don't know how to calculate exactly this guy. There are several several ways. Wang Landau is one way to calculate. It's a very very nice way to calculate it. But what we can do is to use the single histogram ideas. Uh, there are several papers I decide to put this one because uh, 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 this talk was given by, by um, Jesus. I forgot the name. Alan, no, it's not Alex Bunker. It was Alan, yeah. This talk was given by Alan Fembia. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Pascal. In 1990. It was a wonderful talk, and this paper, I like this very much. It's a very pedagogical uh, paper. Well, but anyway, we can estimate G, A, and here uh, they estimate, for me, I will name it age beta zero. It means this is an estimate of G, E at a given temperature. And then the average at beta can be written in this way. This symbol means, and this is an estimate. This is a, a symbol that people use in uh, uh, finite uh, mathematics. This is another important thing. Delta beta is beta minus beta zero. If, of course, I calculate this average at beta zero, then delta beta is, of course, equal zero just because 
age was calculated at beta zero. This will be the trick in, in our procedure. That is something we have to remind ourselves. All right. And what are the Fisher zeros? It's a very simple idea. Suppose we can, we can write the energy levels like uh, n epsilon, with epsilon is some integer. So z, the partition function, can be written in this way, it's a finite, and this z can be written as a polynomial. This is an extension from the real to the complex plane. This, this quantity. Z here uh, is, a, is a complex uh, number now. So we can factorize Z as a product of the roots. It's a quite simple way. Another important thing is G and I mean the coefficients of this polynomial is real. It means that Zn is in the complex plane, and the, the, the roots, they appear in conjugated pairs. Just because this guy is, is real, this is the way they have to appear. But remember, Z is related to beta, temperature. And there is no sense in saying, uh, or, or, or a, a complex temperature. So the possibility to have a transition comes only when Z is real. It means, but on the other hand, this cannot happen if this polynomial is finite. This can happen only when, in, when any is infinite, of course, in the thermodynamic infinite volume limit. Okay? All right. But anyway, this is, a, we know, it's a good representation of our uh, thermodynamic functions. Now, let me give you an idea. This is for the four state clock model. Four state clock model has. Uh, Ising transition, so double Ising transition. Those are the zeros. Those are the zeros for the partition function for the four state clock uh, uh, model, four state clock model. But check this out. What is interesting? This one is z equals zero is infinite temperature. It doesn't matter. It's some. This zero is will 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 uh, uh, coalesce in the in the real in the real uh, axis at the infinite volume. This is the, I I will name this one uh, dominant zero. Dominant, you understand very fastly why I name it dominant zero. And this zero is related to temperature. The, uh, the real part is given by exponential minus beta critical epsilon. The critical temperature can, can be obtained from here. OK. So this is a good example. I will give you a better example, more sophisticated example. This is for the XY model. The XY model, this entire region is critical. The dominant zero is here. Different colors are for different uh, configurations, not different size, but different configurations only. Here in this region is the dominant zero for this size, I do not remember size is that one, but it's probably 
Oh, fifth by fifth lattice. It's two dimensional. It means independent configurations because I have to make at the end some average. So, the, the, my. I'm sorry? If, if you have $10 in your pocket and they $100, I pick your 10 and that 100 and then you have 55 that's mean that means average is it no no i am saying average i'm not saying that he will give you the 100 dollars no this is just because i have to make the average and way uh because this is simulation okay this is for a, a 50 by 50 lattice there is no exact solution so i have to make an average okay that's uh I'm sorry for that. So, this is an average. Uh, this is just to show this is the border of this guy. I'm showing only the border. This is for 10 by 10 and so on. And here it's difficult to see in this, uh, this diagram. It's difficult to see, but anyway, I will show you on the next slide. What happens? I see that all that that region, from very low temperature to higher temperature, the the, the zeros they coalesce, they go to the, they converge to the real, the real x. And this is the high temperature region. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't converge to the to the real x. So, this is a way to use to use the Fisher zeros to understand the, the, the transition, to get the transitions, and so on. This is again something. Those are these are older results. The first, I think, was obtained by Evatt and David in the 1996. Then this one. Oh, this is this work, I think. I do not remember. Oh, no, no, no. This one is if I use all the points in my, my, my picture, and this one is if I just I take away the, the, the smaller one. The, the smaller one, we, in general, we, we do this because I know, we know that it's, it's a very bad point. Okay, but now, so far, so good. It seems wonderful, but we have a big problem, huge problem to say better. This is the easy model. It's a fruit fly model, isn't it? And we know everything about it. So I can use G exactly from this guy and try to, to get the zeros and do the same kind of analysis I did for the XY model. But you see, this is a four by four lattice. Take a look at the size of those. Those are the, 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 the coefficients of the polynomial for me. Four by four, I get this. 32 by 32, it starts to be kind of prohibitive. Well, 96 to 96 is it's almost impossible to, to, to take care of the zeros in this case. Even Mathematica, I do not remember, but probably Mathematica took almost three days to get those, those numbers, those zeros. Something like three days. And 96 by 96 is too small. And worst, take a look in this picture. The dominant zero seems to be here. However, the symmetry was completely broken. The, the, the method to find the zeros is horrible, and it should be. Uh, 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 the, the, the difference between the, the size of the, the polynomial coefficients, uh, this is horrible. And we start thinking, is that a way to just to filter some of those coefficients to take them away and use only the most important of them? 
Well, I don't know. Maybe just cut them here and use those three. Well, it doesn't work. It doesn't work in this way. We have to be a bit more careful. But fortunately, there is a way to do this. It's a wonderful way. And the way to do this is to multiply the partition function by one. Just multiply by one. We have again the partition function with the definitions you already know. Multiply by this quantity. And now what we get? This is exactly the histogram, the single histogram we get in the salon fernberg work. Exactly this, uh, that stuff. So, if we calculate this guy at beta zero, but with beta zero equal the critical beta at the critical temperature, then this guy will be zero. Well, it will be zero. How? Well, because we want to calculate the critical temperature. Uh, the, the, the histogram at the critical temperature. So if I calculate this histogram at the critical temperature, then, of course, this guy has to be zero. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, I like it too. So let me give you an example how to use this. Choose any temperature, beta n, n. Build the single histogram. Find the entire zero picture. Choose the dominant located. It is, of course, complex. Calculate iteratively the next beta. What we expect is that this zero is, let us say, dominant enough uh, that it attracts. Oh, there is a, 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 a we expect a, 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 a attraction basin so that we can do this iteratively. And we check the convergence in this way. It's beta n plus 1 equal beta or close enough to beta n. If so, and then do what we have to do. If not, back to two. And a check of convergence is just given by something like this. Why like this? Because we need that part of this, uh, 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 the, 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 the real part has to go to one, of z, I mean, has to go to one. And the, the, the imaginary part has to be zero. So I need this guy very close to 1 and z. That's yes, of course. Yes. Uh, this this uh, afternoon, now or afternoon? Afternoon. Yeah, this guy will show you several examples on how to use this. It's a wonderful way. This is for easing 32. This is uh, iteratively used. And then we get something very nice. But more, now we know how to cut the histogram. Now it's easy. Now I can just, well, I want to get the, 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 the temperature and the, uh, well, I don't know, the exponents with such and such uh, uh, confidence. So we can just cut it in 10 to minus 4, 10 to minus 6, 10 to minus 2. It just depends on you. Depends on your, your taste or, or your necessity, I mean. So we have 15 minutes left. And if you have no transition, for example, the one-dimensional is a model. It doesn't converge at all, just like that. Or it goes to the wrong way. There is no sense in this, this guy. Negative temperature, there is no sense. It's a, or this is for uh, the Ising, 2D. Yeah, 
There now we can use 96. We can uh, with just calculating the zeros. Here the cut was in 10 to minus 2, I do not remember. And exact value was this and the estimate was this. What, what is, well, everyone knows this. What you gain with this? What's the point? Well, to make those calculations, it takes four hours or less. It just depends on what you, you want to get. This is very, very fast. It's like this. Size of? Oh, here, I'm going to show you. Give me one second. Oh, my time is... Uh, this is, this was another, another very interesting uh, test for the, for the trick, for our algorithm. This polymer, this is a small polymer, it's uh, 13, 13? Yes, 13 uh, uh, polymer, small, 13 beads. Uh, and it has two transitions. One is first order and the other is second order. If we start at a uh, low temperature, 0.1, very fastly we get the, the true transition. And this number compares very fairly with another calculation uh, that is in, in this paper. And if we start a uh, higher temperature, we get the second transition. It converts from this side, from this side, in the middle, it depends where you are. But anyway, it converts very fairly. Again, so far so good. But we have two questions. One is, how good are the zeros if the histogram you get, H, Z, was obtained numerically? This is a question we have to try to respond. And the second, is that even using this trick, the coefficients, uh, not the coefficients, the coefficients is okay, but the, the, the order of the polynomial sometimes becomes still very, very large. It depends on the size of your, the volume your system you're using. But in the first case, I tried to demonstrate something, the convergence. And what we did is just this is the original polynomial, and then I suppose that it fluctuates like this under those conditions, of course. I, I am supposing that these are the, the, the numerically obtained coefficients, and of course, uh, this is a reasonable uh, uh, supposition, and we can rewrite this polynomial like this, this is the original polynomial, so I do some, some calculation and I have at the end, I do not want to stay this uh, longer, but I have some conditions uh, to, to this guy to converge. So it is reasonable, it's not bad, but it is possible to estimate the, 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 the errors and the convergence. And the second was the following. Sometimes, this guy is very, very large. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This guy becomes very, very large. And again, the, 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 the zero finder, can, we can have a problem with it. And uh, in this case, this is for the, the three-dimensional easy model. 6 to 4, 6 to 4, 6 to 4. And in this case, it has uh, something roughly uh, 40,000 theorems, even cutting in 10 to minus 4. So, how to get the zero for the such uh, large polynomial? Of course, it is possible, but how long it will take? So, I can do a very nice trick. Just make the transformation. Make this transformation. So, you have a uh, transformed polynomial. Now the zero is not in one anymore. It's not close to one. It's not close to, to, to one anymore. 
where this polynomial, this is z. You see, this is z, so the zero, the, the, the dominant zero is close to one zero. But not for this one. This one is close to zero, zero. So I know that I can just drop out some, some, some of those coefficients. And what I did was to reduce from 40,000 to 30 terms. And then I calculate the zero like this. Close to here, you see, the, the solid dot is the exact, exact means calculated using all the terms. And the, the open symbol is for transformed, for the transformed uh, polynomial. It just gives the same thing using mathematics again, the same program. Uh, gives the same, very same uh, root uh, with, uh, I don't know, several digits. So now we have a complete picture of this algorithm. You can, I, I hope I responded to you. You can use uh, very, very large, this for very large uh, uh, models. So, uh, oh, yes, I forgot something. I, I, I suppose I will not have time for this, but at the transition, it's easy to calculate now the position of the dominant zero. Not, of course, uh, if you want, you can, but not the position of the maximum of uh, 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 the susceptibility or specific heat, for example. Those guys are not at the pseudo transition. Who is uh, uh, at the transition? The transition is defined by the zero, by the, 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 the zero which is uh, closer to the real x. So in this case, in this case here, you are exactly at the pseudo transition. Then you can get uh, the, 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 the exponents at each of those points and get them very, it, it's very fair. Uh, you can get them with high precision and make the finite size scaling that you know. That is, that is the wonderful uh, way. All right. Oh, don't miss the talk today at 2 p.m. Uh, Lucas Moore will show you some other examples. And this one, it's uh, some calculations he did. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you appreciate. Thank you. Okay, so we have time for a couple of questions.